This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories. So last Thursday, normal day in Las Vegas on the Strip. It's around noon, all the hustle and bustle. You have your tourists that are walking around. You have your characters out, your Spider-Man, your showgirls, your Batman, Superman, all that, right? You take pictures with them. You usually give them like five, 10 bucks, whatever, take a picture with them. That's kind of, that's their hustle. That's their job. If you haven't been to Vegas, it, even during the daytime at noon, it's a different vibe, right? It, it's crazy. It's cool. Now, Metro started to get 911 calls. This is around a quarter to noon, right? 11.42 to be exact. They start getting phone calls that there's this guy running around and he's sticking people. Now, all of them say that this guy, he's dressed in like a chef uniform. You know, the black pants, the white jacket. He's carrying what sounds like probably a chef's knife bag and a suitcase. So when the cops get there, they find two of the showgirls have been stabbed out in front of the wind. And there's about six other victims in all on this trail of where this guy was headed. Now, there were people that were following this guy. They were on the phone with 911. Not really the brightest thing to do. I don't know if I'm chasing down a dude who's randomly just sticking folks. I'm probably trying more just to get away than to be even in the vicinity of somebody who's doing something like this. But nevertheless, somebody was following him. They called the cops. They said he's on Sands Avenue. He's running away. He threw the knife in the bushes. You know, he's covered in blood. The cops finally catch up to him. What did they find? 32-year-old Yanni Barrios, a man from Guatemala in the country illegally with a little bit of a record. So the cops, they start doing their investigation. They pull all the camera work from the wind and they see that he was in the wind and he had come down. They see him stick two showgirls, take off, get another man on Sands Avenue and then multiple other victims kind of as they follow him on this spree on the cameras. Now he approached these two showgirls down the escalator outside of the wind after he had left the wind and he walked up to him all normal. He said, Hey, I would like to take a picture with you guys. Of course they said, yes. He says, can you put my logo in it? Of course they say yes. That's when he pulls a knife out. It's a 12 inch chef's knife. He pulls it out. They kind of, you know, step back. Whoa. He's kind of laughing it off. Like it's no big deal, but they're, they're low key. They're nervous about it. Right? they start to giggle a little bit. Now they're giggling probably out of nervousness for sure. Like, huh, whoa, he takes this the wrong way. Thinks they're laughing at him about his clothes. He rushes 30 year old Maurice DiGiovanni. I hope I said that correct. And he hits her in the chest with this 12 inch knife. She didn't make it. Rest in peace to her. She was one of the showgirls. The other showgirl turned to run and he got her in the back. That's when he took off down the road and he hit 47-year-old Brent Haylett of Las Vegas. He didn't make it either. Now, Yanni, he had been in Las Vegas for about two days. He's from California, originally from Guatemala, illegally in the country. He was supposed to have a friend in Las Vegas that he could stay with. He got here. The friend told him to kick rocks. I'm sure maybe the dude was just too weird. You know, you say, hey, I got a place for you. You can come stay here for a little bit. Then they want to get comfortable or they just start acting funny. And you, you tell them, hey, man, you got to go. That's what looks like happened. 8 a.m. He's on the bus. Allegedly, he told police somebody had made fun of me for the clothes I was wearing on the bus. So that kind of set him in that mind frame. He gets down to the strip. He goes into the wind. He talks to a janitor about a job. Then he asked the janitor, can you just call ICE so they can come get me and I can go home to Guatemala. When security came to talk to him, he tried to sell security his knives. He said in a statement to police that that's when security told him, go step in front of a train. Whether or not that's true or not, I mean, it could be, it, who knows? If it is, that's pretty dirtbag of them, but it's kind of par for the course. Now that's when he walks out of the wind. He walks out of the wind, goes down the escalators, 
And that's when he encounters the showgirls. This is wild. Like they're just out there hustling, making their money, you know, taking pictures. In the middle of the daytime, this happens. It's, it's insane. This is not a normal occurrence by any means. Vegas is very wild. We're known for being wild, but this is extreme. Now he had told police he had stuck about six other people. Victims started showing up, people calling 911, we need help, we need help. Now Brent and Maurice are the two that have passed away over this. There's another victim who is in critical condition still, two victims that were in serious condition at the time that I did this, and then others that had been released. One had to undergo surgery. The doctor basically said, hey, when it comes to these type of wounds, people pass away because you can't stop the bleeding. So that's our number one thing is stop the bleeding. One of the victims actually recalled to police saying that he was walking down the strip with his wife when a man wearing a chef's outfit, carrying a 12 inch knife, covered in blood, ran towards them. He ducked and the guy, as he went by said, sorry man, and stabbed him in the back. That's crazy. That is insane. And it's getting to be normal. It's, it's almost normal to hear about stuff like this. I don't remember stuff like this ever happening 20 years ago. I really don't. The world's going to hell, man. So Yanni Barros, he had, you know, superficial wounds that you will get when you're sticking people. That's a fact. He has these wounds. He's taken to UMC. Then he's booked into the Clark County Detention Center and he's booked on two counts of open murder in the first degree with the use of a deadly weapon. We know about these enhancements if you watch my videos. Also, he's charged with six attempt murders with the use of a deadly weapon. Each one of those is gonna carry probably about an eight to 20 with an additional eight to 20 for the enhancement. So he's gonna get 16 to 40 times six, probably two life sentences without the possibility of parole for the murders. Steve Wilson has said that he is considering this for a death penalty case. Las Vegas is not big on doing death penalty cases. We know very few people get the death penalty. I will do stories more on some of them, like Scott Dozier, things like that. It's very rare that Nevada puts somebody down. In this case, I don't know. I don't know. You gotta hate this guy for what he did, but he was he's going through it, you know? I, I mean, shit, man. What he did, I think he should get the death penalty, absolutely. And I, I don't say that lightly. He took two lives, innocent lives. People cannot run down the street hurting innocent victims, just randomly at will picking somebody and taking their life. Those are the most dangerous type of people. There's nobody more dangerous. If you see it coming, you know, say like Christy Mack knew it was coming. If War Machine found her in bed with that dude, it was gonna happen right then then that's different this this is just random i'm i'm taking your life right now you can't have people like that in the streets it can't happen so there will be obviously a lot more going on with this i will be following this case very closely i don't know i don't know if the da is even going to give the man a plea deal he might just have to go to trial they'll probably give him the plea deal life without times two and then stack 16 to 40s times six onto him and he will live the rest of his days you know at high desert state prison or probably not at lovelock probably at lovelock guy like that is probably gonna have to go pc you can't just walk up and randomly just start stabbing people in vegas we're not gonna put up with that thank you for coming to vegas prison stories i appreciate each and every one of you and i hope you guys have an amazing day and i'll see you next time This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories. Bro, what is that dude thinking? Are you kidding me? What it is is, he's on the bus, he gets made fun of, but he probably gets made fun of by somebody who he don't want no parts of. He's like, oh man, these dudes to beat the brakes off of me. So he built that anger up, built that anger up. He's got old old friend that kicked him out. He's not from here. He's got the weight of the world. You ever watch Falling Down? This is a falling down moment. That's what this is. 
you know? The dude had just snapped. He'd had enough, and he's just walking around. But the problem is, is he took it out on the wrong people. If the security guard told you that, stick to security guard. If somebody on the bus disrespected you, stick them. You don't just walk up to these showgirls, these uh, people that can't really defend themselves or wearing high heels and these gaudy things. And those women didn't stand a chance. It's not right. You picked a victim because you saw them as a victim, not because you felt disrespected. And that's bullshit. That's a fact. And that's how I feel on it. I hope that dude burns in hell. Fuck him. Just walk up and randomly sticking people in the back and shit. That's not right. All right, guys, that's what I got. There's no funny shit going on. Watch my little video later, though. I'm dropping. Oh, it's the comments video. Rick, you're you're stupid. It's too early for this shit. Yeah. Watch the comments video. It's okay. It, I kind of rant a lot in it, though, because some people said some out of line shit. You'll see. All right, guys. That's how we end it.